wow, I really released the club head on that one. That was an awesome shot, long and straight. But what exactly is a perfect release? Well, the answer is gonna kind of surprise you and I'm gonna talk about it right after this. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. The short answer to what is a perfect release is that it's not only gonna depend on a number of other factors within your swing or anybody else's swing, and also some factors on the ball flight or the shape of the shot you happen to be trying for on that particular shot. So in other words, a perfect release is gonna vary from person to person and from shot to shot out on the golf course. Okay, a first big variable on what a perfect release is can have to do with if your club face is square at the top, closed, or open. And that can often be due to what kind of grip style you use. So let's take a look at a couple opposite examples. We'll take a look at Dustin Johnson, who tends to play a little bit of a stronger grip. Of course, he bows the wrist, left wrist at the top. So with a strong, strong, stronger grip and a bowed wrist, you're gonna get a club face that kind of faces the sky more at the top like that. Now, in his case, when he comes back down, he's already got the club face pretty darn square to the arc. And so his perfect release is going to be both a little bit more of a right forearm staying in a bit more of a supinated position. That's this is supination, okay? It's gonna stay a little more in a supinated position all the way through the hit because that club face already has plenty of squaring force built into the system. He almost feels like he's gonna be releasing it pinky first, pinky leading underneath with the fleshy part of the right forearm and around to the left more that way. And that will help him keep the these closed club face from going left on him at the ball. And he plays a little fade a little bit from the outside in as his stock shot. Now to contrast that, we'll take a look at Masters Champion Scotty Scheffler. He's a little bit of a weaker grip, also tends to play a fade off of this, but in a little different way. You see his club face the top from a much weaker grip and a little bit more forearm rotation going back and he points the club kind of down to the ground at the top of the swing like this. So he's gonna have to either settle for a fade, which he tends to do. Or if you wanted to draw it or play it straight out of this, you could, it's a little more challenging, but you could. Of course, you're gonna have to rotate the forearms more going through the shot on your release to help the club face square up. Since it has a natural tendency to wanna come in a little bit open, you're gonna just have to rotate the forearms a bit more going through like that. Now, Scheffler can do this if you watch the Masters. Him trying to play these dog leg lefts was almost comical. I mean, it worked like an absolute dream. But you should see some of the swings that he was making and the follow throughs, you know, like this. It was pretty wacky at times, but that's how he figured out for him how to release the club through impact to get the ball to draw around those dog legs. And doesn't matter if it's funny, it just matters what he wrote down on the scorecard. Now, a perfect release for you will also depend on the quality of your hand path. And so, I'll give you a couple examples of this. If you were coming in from here in the slot, but going out with the handle, and the handle doesn't continue to arc, but instead travels to center field or out to right field, you're gonna to have to roll the forearms more and you're gonna to have to flip the toe over. You're gonna to have to spin the shaft more in your release to make it your best possible release. Now it's not gonna be amazingly economical and consistent, but that is the perfect release that works for that particular style of hand path. You're coming from here and you're not exiting around to the left. Well, you're gonna to have to introduce some of this look flipping the toe over like that for you to get the face, the face square at impact or even draw the ball back to center. Now, if you're continuing to keep the hand path more along an optimal arc from this slot position, it would look like this. 
and you wouldn't quite have to flip the club face over as much. Watch this again. Watch this part right here. Well, now as I go with my hands moving around the arc to the left, I don't need to roll the forearms or the club, the toe over because I've already got enough squaring force there to make the ball go straight. I just don't need to flip it anymore. So then my perfect release is going to be a little bit more of the, the Dustin Johnson style, keeping the club face more upwards, tracking the arc around the corner like that. Now a third huge variable is the shot you need to play. So better players, and I'm not even talking about tour players, but even single digit golfers probably have figured out or need to figure out how to play a couple different shots. You've got a, you know, an into the wind par three and you've got to knock a shot down. Well, just out of necessity, most single digit golfers have kind of figured out some version of a knockdown shot to keep it low. Now what I'll do with a perfect release on a knockdown shot is I'm just going to simply hold this right wrist in extension a little bit longer before I flap it through. And that's going to give me just a little bit more forward lean at the moment of impact and I can kind of play a kind of a stinger knockdown shot here. Something more like that. I got that ball stay really close to the deck and be a really good wind cheater. And so on and so forth for the high shot, the fade, the draw. You know, to hit a higher shot, I'm going to simply let go of this extension a little earlier. I'm going to flap a little further behind it and get rid of some of that forward lean. Instead of maybe 16 degrees of forward shaft lean, I might get 10 or 8 or 6 or even 0 depending on the club and how high I need the ball to go. And of course, that is a perfect release for that particular ball flight that I'm after. Of course, fading and drawing is going to involve the probably the turning in and out of the forearms in order to control that. So depending on what shot you are trying to manufacture, the perfect release will vary there also. Okay, so there's three different variables, major variables that will dictate what style of release or the exact uh, muscular actions going through the ball that will work perfectly consistently for you. Okay, so just some general guidelines, some good recommendations for a good quality release. You're going to be, of course, throwing the club from the top of the swing, throwing it freely, throwing it sometimes very aggressively like a whipping style action. Got to add enough face squaring force from the top down to get this thing to square up and not be left open. It needs some kind of squaring force from the top, whether it be from the rolling of the shaft or just simply the advancing of the shaft around the grip. But you've got to figure out enough force to get the club squared up. And then a quality release will also have a little bit less rotation of the club face through the impact zone, something like this, rather than say this, might net you a little bit more consistency in controlling the club face. So some three pretty good rules, just jumping off point to figure out if you are making a good release. All right, I'm gonna go back and work on the perfect release for me in my style of swing and grip and sh preferred shot shape. But thanks so much for watching. I'm Steve. I hope you'll visit hititlonger.com and check out the free articles and videos, maybe buy a product and just help support what I do and I can bring you more instructional content. And as usual, I'll either see you in the next video or I'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Everybody take good care.